Hey guys, Chicago injury lawyer Scott DeSalvo here, and in today's video we're going to talk about how to avoid one of the most common traps insurance companies lay for you, okay? So I had this come up recently, but I'm going to talk to you about a case that happened a number of years ago. Um, so I represented an older guy, and he couldn't remember whether he gave a recorded statement to the insurance company before hiring me. So he's an older guy on some medication and with some other health conditions, so I wasn't going to hassle him too much about not remembering. Plus, it's confusing because every time you call the insurance company, the recorded line says, oh, uh, your phone is being recorded for, you know, this call is being recorded for quality assurance training and other purposes. You know, you should be careful about whatever you talk to an insurance company on the phone about, but that's not a recorded statement. A recorded statement is when they schedule the recorded statement and they say, do you mind if I tape record what we're talking about? You say, no, I don't mind. And then they say, okay, I'm turning the recorder on. This is so-and-so from such-and-such -such insurance company on a recorded line speaking with so-and-so. Sir, do I have your permission to record this conversation? And then they go through the questions and at the end they say, all right, I'm turning the recorder off. Like that's a recorded statement, right? And then they ask you detailed questions about the crash and your injuries. As a reminder, I always tell people, do not give a recorded statement until you have a lawyer involved. So in this guy's case, fast forward, they didn't want to offer any money. And um, it was time to present him for a deposition, which is, you know, a three hour statement that you have to give once the case is in a lawsuit because they wouldn't make a settlement offer. I'm like, okay, fine. So I was, pr I was prepping him for his dep. The defendant was pushing to get the deposition done, but they wouldn't answer. Like the question I asked him in written discovery saying, do you have any recorded statements or any statements of any party, including the plaintiff? They, they just said investigation continues. They didn't answer it one way or the other, right? So that made me suspicious. So, you know, I was calling the defense attorney multiple times the week before, and then the morning before, you know, he, he calls me up and says, um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. Uh, let me check. And I tell him, look, you can take my, my client's deposition since it's set, but you have to give me something in writing saying that you're promising not to use any recorded statement against my client at any point in the litigation of the case for any purpose, and he wouldn't agree to do it. So I told him, look, we're not doing the deposition. You and I have a right to look at your recorded statement, review it, the minute we get answers to discovery and way before you give a, give a deposition. So I'm actually doing a deposition today where it's a similar situation where a client uh, actually gave a very brief deposition in a related case and uh, you know, I just, there are defense attorneys and then there are defense attorneys, right? Some of them, their word is their bond and they're very honorable, but a lot of them are win at all costs. They'll lie to your face. They'll hide stuff. They'll pull dirty tricks. And the ones who bug me the most are the ones who act like they're your buddy. And then they'll stab you right in the back and then act like, oh, well, yeah, no, this is normal. Well, in your world, Doing crap like that is normal. In my world, my word is my bond. And I don't pull crap on like that, like that to people. And if you do it, I'm not that crazy about you. I'm not your buddy. I'll be cordial. I'll be professional. It's not going to make me be dishonest. But I know what I'm dealing with. I'm not dealing with a stand-up guy or a gal. Anyway, my point is, here's how you avoid falling in a trap like that. Number one. If you give a recorded statement, well, first of all, don't give a recorded statement. Wait till you're represented. Wait till a lawyer is representing you because the, a recorded statement is a trap that they're trying to put you in. But if you do give a recorded statement, before you give it, tell them you want a copy of it as soon as the statement's over. They can send you the audio or the transcription. But if you're giving a recorded statement, you, you want them to email you immediately a copy of it. And if they won't e email you a copy of it immediately, then don't agree to do it. The third thing you can do is obviously tell your lawyer honestly, if you can remember, 
whether you gave a recorded statement, because then the lawyer will know I'm not prepping. I'm not going to present this person for a dep without a copy of the recorded statement. Right? So um, that's how that works. And that's how you can protect yourself, because if they take your deposition and you say anything different than what was said in the recorded statement, they can impeach you. And that's why you have a right to look at the recorded statement before your deposition and refresh your memory. And, uh, you know, believe me, the, the reason they hide it is because they kill cases that way. So don't fall in that trap. Now you know all about it. So if you are concerned about winning your personal injury case, settling it quick, and getting max value, getting as much money as the law says you're allowed to get, then I would encourage you to give me a call for a free consultation. You can call this number anytime, night or day, any day of the year. Could be Christmas, could be New Year's, could be Arbor Day, could be your birthday or mine, doesn't matter. The phone already always gets answered 312-500-4500. That's 312-500-4500. Uh, check out the links in my description. I got a couple of calculators down there that show you uh, what your case might be worth or whether you have a good case or a case with some challenges. Uh, really quick and easy and free to use. Links in the description. And if you enjoy the videos, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. And if you wouldn't mind, it would really help me if you gave me a five-star review on Google. Link in the description. You just cut and paste that into a web browser. Click go. Click five stars. Say a kind word. Hit submit. Five seconds for you but invaluable favor to me because people really pay attention to those Google reviews. So if you would take the time to do it, it would really help me out. I'd really appreciate it. I really do appreciate all my viewers and all the comments and all the questions. If you know anybody who needs a lawyer and you could send them my way, I'd really appreciate it. This is, after all, what I do for a living. I'm not pretty enough or entertaining enough to be a professional YouTuber. I'm just a guy who... Uh, likes to make sure injured people get the information they need. So if you got any injury cases for me, whether it be car crash, workers comp, fall down, dog bite, bar fight, medical malpractice, nursing home, or however you or a friend got hurt, please send them my way at 312-500-4500. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.